Hello, I'm Marge Charmley, and I'm from St. Paul. I'm Anita Kozan, and I'm from Minneapolis. Welcome to Buy Cities, a show by, for, and about the bisexual audience and our friends and allies, and as Dr. Charmley likes to say, the longest running show on bisexuality in the history of the world. We have a special uh, choice for you tonight for what you're going to see, so I'm going to ask Marge to tell us about it. Yes, we are going to honor our allies tonight. You know, we talk about uh, Bi Cities as being a show by, for, and about the Bi Plus community and our friends and allies. Well, we have some very special allies that we want to commemorate tonight, and one of whom has passed recently, so we wanted to rebroadcast a show that we did in March of 2011. And the show at the time was two people from Messiah Lutheran Church in Mount Iron, Minnesota, who came on by cities to talk about a process that their congregation went through to become a Reconciling in Christ congregation. And Reconciling in Christ congregation means that the congregation went through a discernment process to get to a point where they would openly welcome and celebrate uh, gay, lesbian, bi, and transgender people. So this little church in northeastern Minnesota, which happened to be from my hometown, is the only church now in northeastern Minnesota, with the exception of one in Duluth, who is openly welcoming of gay, lesbian, and bi, and transgender people, even today. So we want to rebroadcast the show that featured Sue Wilson and Dean Johnson, both of whom were part of the task force that um, uh, help bring the congregation to the place where they voted. And they will be talking about the journey that Messiah Lutheran Church used to get to that point. It's still a timely episode, and we want to commemorate our allies, and especially uh, in memory of Sue Wilson. So welcome to Buy Cities. Welcome. Again, for those of you who have been watching the show regularly, last fall we had several members from Messiah Lutheran Church in my hometown of Mountain Iron, Minnesota, on the show to talk about their journey to becoming a Reconciling in Christ Church. And Reconciling in Christ Church means that they are welcoming of gay, lesbian, bi, and transgender people. Tonight, we have a follow-up interview with two people who are on the, they were founding members of the Reconciling in Christ Task Force that helped to shepherd that eventual vote about a year ago to fruition. With us tonight are Dean Johnson, who was one of the founding members of the Reconciling in Christ Task Force, and Sue Wilson, who is another founding member. And they are here tonight to talk about what it's been like one year after having been um, uh, gone on this journey, and to talk a little bit about how they got to the point that they did, plus to give us a little peek into the future of a mm -hmm. tea party, not like tea party, the political <laughs> one, but a tea party that will be hosted by Messiah Lutheran Church, and all are welcome, uh, and that will be taking place in May 21st of 2011. So having said that, thank you, Sue, and thank you, Dean, yes. for making the journey tonight. I just you know, kind of had to laugh when I was emailing and saying, well, we might get bad weather. And Dean mm. emailed back and said, I've been driving Minnesota roads for 50 years. And, and unless this is a real barn burner of a storm that comes in, we will be there. Yes. You did, they so, said that. You did. did. I loved it. You it was did. great. Yes, yes. Thank so, you very welcome. much for coming down. It's good to be here. I will let you go first, Jean. You're the leader of our group, <laughs> and you can fill them in on how we got where we were, or where we are. Okay. Well, maybe we yeah. can even start out with what drew the two of you mm -hmm. to this task force. I mean, you know, it's it's not like any place on the Iron Range is a big gay, lesbian, bi, and transgender mecca. So, you know, this was congregation driven and. Uh, you're not GLBT yourself, so you know what 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 brought you there? I was asked. <laughs> you were, you were, you were and asked. You said yes, and, you said and, yes. and I shall yes, follow. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and uh, when they were forming the task uh, the the task force, that's really true. I was asked, and I and I think most of us were. Were we not? Yes. By um, by Pastor Foster. Okay. Mm. And. Uh, which point I agreed readily because I 
I was, we were talking about how our lives change. And the older I get, I don't like oppression. I don't like I don't like a lot of rules. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a classical Iron Range. <laughs> we don't like rules. Of no. <laughs> and uh, so I, I was glad to, to join it and learn and go through the steps and the phases of what we needed to do. And we took it very slow. It went slow, about seven years. And we had a lot of education to do. There, was, uh, there were a lot of hurdles to jump, a lot of mountains to climb. We did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You wow. mentioned that, that the, the RIC uh, task force began, you know, from within the congregation, and that's absolutely true. This is not pastor driven as, as committed as she is to that, to, to being open and accepting and sharing the gospel with people. Uh, one of the members of the, of the church council at the time was aware of the controversy going on in the, the whole ELCA. Uh, especially regarding um, calling and ordaining GLBT ministers. Uh, and we had had, the, the church as a whole went through a process of um, developing a welcome, or developing a, um, a sexuality statement. We had had a, um, we had been a part of that study uh, the, the previous summer uh, when we invited a number of people, Marge included, to, to come to talk about their experiences as uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual people. I don't think we had any transgendered uh, people. Um, so this came out of the church council and was voted on by the congregation to, to explore becoming an open and accepting congregation and specifically an RIC congregation. I was kind of in it in the beginning as a leader of the church and, and the, those, those of us who were committed to, to the process decided that we needed to have people on the task force who, some of us rabid people who were in favor of that, all the way to, uh, you know, through people that were neutral or, or um, not educated about the process, through people that we expected would be opposed to that, and, in, and including all different age groups. So we did some recruiting, you know, there was an open invitation to people that were interested in that process. But there were some people that were very specifically asked because they knew that they would be along, we knew that they would be somewhere along that, that spectrum and wanted that because we couldn't be open and accepting unless we all loved each other and um, could op open and accept people that had an opinion that were different than ours. So. That's, I just, I'm, when, when you told us that at dinner tonight, I, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, talk about unconditional regard of accepting everyone onto this committee and being willing to share opinions, feelings, whatever they might be. That's, that's a, a powerful message on how to work together from the beginning. Yes. Yeah, because we can't be open and accepting unless, you know, that whole spectrum mm -hmm. is, is loved and cared about, too. Well, tell yeah. us a little bit about, you know, how the journey unfolded. You said there were some obstacles and, um, you know, did you lose people in the congregation as you went through this process of <coughs> discernment? We lost a few, but not anything like was... Uh, but people said, oh, you're just going to lose half your congregation. That did not happen. Not we not lost well. a few, and ultimately they came back. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Wonderful. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, that was not a major thing. But um, there Although was a, it was a big fear. It was a huge yeah. fear. Uh, Emily Eastwood came up with and, and did some, a series at our church of the eye wheel. And then, which she now uses, where she was at the time, using Messiah's eye wheel as her model. And I don't what know is what that is. It's a, 
I can't remember what the I stands for. Uh, but it's a, it's a process that you go through where people um, express their, their greatest hopes and their greatest fears about what would happen if, you know, going through any, I mean, they use it in industry to, right. to, to, to talk about products that are oh, going out on the market. And, you know, what, you know what, what's the worst thing that could happen, you know, and, and what are your greatest hopes? For this, so we did that about the process of becoming. Uh, and that took a while. R I C, yeah. and then we identified, you know, the the things that we wanted to accent and decide how we were going to get there, namely becoming a beacon of hope for everyone, you know, on on the Iron Range. Uh, probably was the highest vote, and and. All the way to you know losing you know losing members, we decided that we we really did not want to lose one member if we could possibly, you know, help. Uh, that so then we decided on you know well, what are the things that we need to do to become a beacon of hope and to you know not alienate. And anyone. the majority of it was yeah. education, educate, 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 talk, talk, talk. Yeah. And you did that always within the kind of the body of the church mm -hmm. on on Sunday, or were there special lectures or classes? Or we had special. Yeah, all of the above. <laughs> all of the above. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, I mean, certainly throughout uh, the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, as as a as a pastoral lay pastoral associate, I do some of the preaching. Uh, you know, during that time, if the text at all lent itself to making an open and welcoming statement, you know, I would do that. You know, Pastor Foster certainly does that, you know. That, oh, she's wonderful. Uh, because it, you know, being opening, op open and welcoming is preaching the gospel. You know, mm -hmm. God loves us all, you know, no matter who you are. And, and uh, you know, whether you think you know, there's sexuality is a sin or certain forms, or, you know, uh, it, it doesn't matter. You know, God loves us all, no matter what. So. Were there any surprises along the way that, you know, you just thought, wow, I wasn't expecting this, or pleasant or otherwise, you know? You, you guys had to kind of go along for about seven years, I guess, before it, it you did. had to vote. Um, <laughs> this seems really facetious and really kind of silly, but on the day that we took the vote was the, we, was the day that we had our annual meeting. And the members of the task force that were there, I mean, we sat with bated breath. We did not know how that vote was going to go. Whoa. And when it passed, I mean, we just kind of let out a whoop, you know. It yeah. was, that was a really pleasant surprise. Yeah, we, we in order not to identify anyone, you know, mm -hmm. we did a secret ballot, and um, there was one no vote. Oh and my gosh. how many gosh. yes votes? The entire congregation. The entire that congregation. Uh, that were, was at the annual meeting. Everybody yeah. else at the annual yeah. meeting. I think it was either 50 something or 60, Low 60s, I can't remember. But so one no there was vote. About, yeah, one no That's vote. That's wonderful. And that that yeah. presented, that came up, and then we continued with our meetings, and then that came up with, now we got it, what do we do with it? <laughs> Where do we go from here? Yeah. Once we, again, we, education. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. We, well, plus, the other thing uh, that has happened is um, we certainly recognize, and so we're maintaining our IC. In, in the name of the new committee. Actually, we've gone from a task force now because the task force accomplished its goal of becoming mm -hmm. an uh -huh. RIC yes. congregation. We're recommending that to the congregation and becoming. Um, so we have become the RIC and evangelism committee because what we need to do is to continue to express to as many people as possible that God loves you no matter who you are, no matter what you've heard before, you know, from the, the church or what you may be hearing from, you know, other churches here, you know, God loves you and you're welcome. And you are here. always welcome here. Right. 
Well, we have had uh, James Fountain and Will Murden on the show who are two gay men yes. who learned about Messiah after the vote and came mm -hmm. to your church, my church, do I like to think of it, mm -hmm. but um, our church. Church you grew up in. Yes, yes, the church I grew up in. But James and Will had been on this sojourn for a year or so before they finally found a place that embraced them. And James has said it saved his life. And it was for real. And, you know, I've been back a couple times and I've seen, you know, the greeters at the door and some of the new hospitality things that you have instituted. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You have some of them. We have some there. of them. Yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about what we have here because I, yes. I think they're special. And then we'll get a close-up if we can. That should be your job. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, Sue. <laughs> Uh, and the greeting at the door. We have, we have greeted, but very sporadically, usually on holidays when we know that the grandma and grandpa are going to come for Easter Sunday dinner with their kids, you know, and, and, and Easter or Christmas or a Christmas pageant or something like that. But now we have a greeter at the door every single Sunday. And we, we like to have two greeters at the door, one to open the door and the other person to physically greet them. And if there is a person in that, because we are, we're not a rea, very large church and we recognize our own congregation, but if we, somebody that we don't know, we introduce ourselves and we say, you know, uh, are you visiting with us? Are you a guest of ours today? And yes, they are. Well, my name is Sue. So nice to meet you. What is your name? And then we invite them in and we bring them over to the, to the uh, hospitality table and we give them um, a bookmark. This is our, we have, to, we had this made into bookmarks. This is our welcome statement. And it was, this was a journey in itself, wasn't it? <laughs> just <laughs> just creating all the, the right welcoming words. statement. Yes, yes. yes. many, yes. many, yes. many yes. votes, lots of input from everybody. So nobody felt excluded. That is neat. And, yes. um, and then we, and this Give is now in all the hymnals as well. Yes, you, it's in every it hymnal. Down, yes. And then we, we entered into this, we give them a cookie. This is the, the official <laughs> Messiah Lutheran cookie. <laughs> Messiah know, Lutheran how, how Church you cookie. Can get up on that. But. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, uh, this was James's idea. Oh, James, of course. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it says, you are welcome here, and then our website on it. And everybody, in the future, all the guests will get them. But on the first day, we handed them out. We, three of us met in the kitchen the day before, and we baked 300 cookies and, <laughs> and packaged them up in these cute little packages. And the following Sunday, the following day on a Sunday, we gave one of these and one of these to every single person that came through our door. Aww. That's wonderful. So that was really fun. That was nice. So everybody knew what we were talking about. And how did you select that chocolate chip cookie to be we the Messiah Luther Church off. cookie? You had a bake <laughs> off. All right. And we, we advertised that the CBO is coming. The CBO is coming. We had these little signs. The cookie bake off. <laughs> So <laughs> and who were the but judges? But it was a mystery early on. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. and CBO. Um, what is CBO? What is CBO? Huh? Build some tension. Uh huh. Know. Sure. Claudia uh, went through the congregation and selected. We had twelve entries. Claudia Scalco. Claudia yes. Scalco, and uh, and she picked uh, you know some older members and some moms and some dads and some middle school kids and. Even some nursery school kids, and oh, that's <laughs> and there, you know, and there were the little ballots and vote and put put it in the one that uh, uh, won the cookie bake off. So the one that you liked the best, and it was this one, and it was really this is really kind of a cute little story too. We have a, this lady in our congregation. She just bakes like beautifully. I mean, you can't believe what she makes. Her name is Karen. And she actually submitted two. She submitted this cookie, and she submitted a bar with a lovely almond frosting. You know, it was really nice. And the, that's what really won. But we <laughs> couldn't have a bar. 
<laughs> because <laughs> it, was, it was a cookie. It was a cookie. <laughs> it was a cookie bake. <laughs> and it would get all messed so up. So you excluded the bars in this opening and she congregation. And won. <laughs> <laughs> she won the cookie. Yeah, the poor bars were excluded. So yeah, no did. welcoming statement about cookies really and bars. bars yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I know that our time is winding down oh, and that um, we want to hear about the tea party about the event that's coming up. We have five minutes, so we've got to have a succinct little joyful uh, description of what's going to happen on May 21st, 2011. Uh, I, I'll really briefly tell you, last year, it was it, this, this concept was uh, Claudia's idea, Claudia Skelko, and uh, she was supposed to come with us, but she could not get off from work. Right. And so anyway, we had the tea party last year, and we just transformed the whole social hall. It was just absolutely beautiful. We were busy and working and decorating and doing all this stuff. And last year was open door friendship tea. Our doors are open to everybody. Mm -hmm. And out in the Arctic, she found this old beat up door and we decorated it with flowers and wreaths and oh. <laughs> all kinds of stuff. And, and it was open door friendship tea. That led into this year now, where I have our tea on uh, uh, the 21st of May, and our theme is everybody is somebody. Hats off to you. So we're asking everybody to wear their favorite hat. Doesn't matter. It could be a fishing hat. It could be a cowboy hat or something you cut grass in or something you... One of the elements elegant, from the mines brim. or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or Easter parade. Yeah. And, um, and, this, and that's our theme this year, and that's what our decorations will be. And we have invited, uh, James and Will did a table last year. Dean is going to do a table this year as well, as long as Will, is, it's not just a lady thing. Right, and, yeah. right. And we are. Uh, as a representative of the Mostly Men Bible Study, <laughs> I'm hosting a table this year. And so the thing is that everybody hosts a table you, and then you get to decorate it, and everybody has different decorations on their tables. Exactly. And, you, you know, bring fancy your, china if you want. You bring or, it right. from yeah. home. Or your buck knife, as we were talking about. <laughs> That's right. I might, I might bring my Boundary Waters cook set. Yeah, yeah there you go. You, you know, have a real guy's you bring table your, there. your things from home. And I, I was saying, I'm not hosting a table this year because I'm going to, I, I selected kitchen duty. But uh, last year I hosted the table and I didn't have one person from the congregation. I was the only one. I had all outsiders. So everybody was indeed so well. Yep. New people. Everyone was Yeah, welcome. it was wonderful. Yeah, and the idea is to, you know, <clears throat> to continue to extend our welcome to anybody and, you know, break, it break the rules. It who you are, uh -huh. what you are, what you do, whatever. Everybody is somebody. And Wonderful I understand speech. that Will and James's table is kind of the talk of the town. That's right. <laughs> we last, got last year, on, on last the year they took the, uh, the they took the unofficial uh, uh, prize <laughs> prize uh, for the for the most decorative table. So uh -huh. I I I might go for that. This year. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I set up a little competition. Yeah, James, yeah. yeah. We hear there's some very famous, um, some beautiful Finnish, um, uh, as in from Finland, some uh, new dishes that uh, the Johnson uh, family has acquired. And so we'll be looking forward to hearing about that. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that we just have a couple of minutes left. And we invited you to, to speak to our viewing audience, because we have people from all walks of life and all different ages. and and to give you a chance of where, from what you have been through, what is your message to the people who are watching tonight? Sure. My interest in this whole process is that as many people as possible understand the love of God uh, through Jesus Christ and that no matter who you are, you know, what you've heard from anyone else, uh, you know, God loves you. And uh, if you come to Messiah Lutheran Church, uh, you will be welcome. That's a wonderful statement. So, so if we're mm -hmm. vacationing up north, yes. we could yes. stop in. Yes. Please in stop Mount in. Mount Iron, yes. Mount Iron, Mount Minnesota. Mount Iron Minnesota. Minnesota. And what, what time is the service? 9.30. 9.30. <laughs> in the morning. Sunday morning. All right, all right. And uh, the website for Messiah Lutheran Church will be coming up on the screen. Okay. So yeah. feel free to go to that and learn a little bit more about this. But let me take a moment to 
You know, when you said that you studied what you wanted to have happen as a result of this, and the major vote came as a beacon of hope. I had not heard that part of the mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that we wanted you to come on by cities was to share that message of hope. And we get people that watch this all over the world. And occasionally we will get emails that say, you know, this story inspired me. And so thank you for being a beacon of hope. Mm -hmm. and the church that could <laughs> <laughs> and that you kept persisting and you brought everybody along and what an overwhelming vote and and what love mm -hmm. so thank you so much for having us yeah, yeah thank you yeah it's it's wonderful and we are getting the wrap which means it's over and thank you for being on the show and would you 10 seconds <laughs> Now we're getting there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have to kind of watch our floor manager. So please, I see. Please greet uh, uh, Pastor Kristen Foster and all of oh, your friends and families in the congregation and tell them thanks so much yeah. for being a beacon of hope for us. Yes. Thank you for yes. having us be yeah. your messenger. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> lovely. Join us in looking at camera three with our signature goodbye. Thank you for watching Bye Cities and bye for now. Bye for now. Bye for bye now. Bye for now.